When the second industrial revolution occurred, changes such as the addition of new technology and factories caused a big scene, but the social modifications that happened would impact the lives of the mass society for a lifetime. This time period consisted of social class rearrangements, introduction of the new levels of the middle class, the aristocracy in charge, a change in the way people got married, and the boom of population, as well as the rights of women. Among some of the social class refinements that occurred, major changes were made to the middle class specifically. The middle class wasn't just the middle class anymore, but instead consisted of an upper level, a solid middle level, and the lower level. Included with the middle class sections were also the aristocracy, the wealthy, and the poor slash the laborers. This picture displays all of the different social classes during the time in which in one house, but on different floors. It can be told which floor belongs to which social class by the outfits worn and the different activities seen being done. The wealthiest, which you can tell by their fanciful outfits, are on the very bottom level, while you have the poor situated at the very top, which seems more like an attic rather than an actual floor. The reason the artist drew the poor at the very top was because with air conditioning in a house, it blows to ground level. The hot air has nowhere else to rise but up, where the laborers are located, proving that the poor always get the worst end when it comes to economic significance. The highest section of the middle class is the upper class, which consists of wealthy industrialists, merchants, and bankers. Some of the things they do for leisure include going to the opera slash the theater. They also supported advanced education, enforced gender roles, and tried to lengthen childhood. The profession of those in the solid middle class were business professionals, moderately successful industrialists and merchants, engineers, doctors, and lawyers. Their children also stayed home with the mothers and attempted to receive an education. Finally, in the lowest class, there were small traders, shopkeepers, and manufacturers, also as well as white-collar workers. The children probably worked with the parents and were less dependent on them. During this time, they began enjoying sports like soccer and going to the theater. The aristocrats were considered nobles in this time period and mostly consisted of industrialists, bankers, and merchants. They were considered extremely selfish because of the corn laws that were passed to make them richer. They often married with the wealthy upper middle class. They also could be identified by their clothing attire as can be seen in the two photos. In the previous years, marriages were known to happen for wealth, power, and convenience. Starting in the Industrial Revolution, the ideal of romantic love became more important and couples began marrying for love rather than the money of their spouse. But this was mostly only true about the working class. Also, men began getting married at later ages to younger women because of economics and money. Prostitution was common in this era as well. In the 19th century, the rights and positions of women had decreased tremendously. This is because once the Industrial Revolution started, men began to dominate the job market that was previously geared towards women and a sexual double standard had risen. Once men became the main wage earner in the family, the women stayed at home to take care of the children as well as do the housework. And if a woman wanted, did want to work, she was confined to low-paying and unpromising jobs. Separate spheres was a term used to describe the work did by females in each class. For example, a higher-level woman is less likely to work than a poor or widowed woman. Also, there was two views on how women were treated. The Marxist view that believed that women were doubly oppressed and the socialist view that emphasized the complementary aspects of being a female. In the time period in which the Industrial Revolution took place, there was a giant population boom in which the number of people there were grew by nearly 50%. Things such as machines helping with the workload and having a high food supply led the population to grow. But instead of having an increase in the birth rate, the key factor was that people were starting to live longer than before due to the aid of medical machines. For example, on this graph right here, it shows the gradual then sudden increase of population shortly after the revolution occurs.